Hi everyone, I'm in my tackle room again and uh, it's nice and cold outside, everywhere's frozen up. <laughs> so unless you're fishing a river, you'll be breaking ice. And uh, I'm not an ice breaker anymore, I've done that in my, in my day. And uh, if, it's, if I've got break ice, I will stop in bed. And uh, uh, that's what I do. So that, that, that's what it is. But so it's still great fishing if you know where to go and, and everything in the winter. But what I'm going to show you because I've been asked by a few people how I fish bread, how I put my bread on when I'm fishing on a commercial fishery. And it, it, to be honest with you, it's pretty simple. I don't complicate it as I don't in most things. Um, but a few years ago, I was struggling a bit with bread. I, I couldn't get it in my head. And bread is a great bait at winter. When the waters go clear, the fish want the bread or a floating bait. Because what happens, all the fish show up and they go together, usually in the middle of the lake and they, they feed off the bottom. And when the feed off the bottom, you want a bait that's going to be suspended sometimes. So bread is a great bait. Floating neons is a great bait. So they're the two go-to baits that I use in the winter. But a few years ago, I used to struggle a bit with bread. And a good friend of mine, Neil McKinnon, put me right on it. He says, it's in your head. Because it's light and fluffy, you think it's come off and it ain't. He says, and that's what most people do. They sit there for 10 minutes and think... Uh, I don't think my bread's on, I'm not quite sure of what they do, the, the winding, it's not on it, obviously, and I think it's come off. It's on, and that's what he said to me, believe that it's on. And, it, and I, so I went and practised, and just, all I did one day, I went practising, I just took bread, I took nothing else. And they were right, you can sit there for 20, 25 minutes, and then you'll get a fish, you'll get a bite. Then that, what happens to that is, that belief tells you that your bread's on all the time. It's a great bait in the winter, especially in the winter, especially when waters are clear. I mean, people talk about different coloured baits and oh, in winter you need a dark bait and one a canal you need a dark bait. Bread is white. It's, it's so, you know, to me that defeats everything that you learn about baits and dark colours and everything like that. The, one of the best baits in the winter is, is bread and it's white. So how do, I, how do I do it? Well, first thing you need, you need one of these. You need one of these containers. And one of these containers is, different companies do them. Uh, the boxes and the bread boxes basically, but you can use them for meat and other things like that. But the idea is you've got a flat base there so you can put your bread on, like that. There you've got your four punches, you'll be 6, 8, 10 and 12. And it depends on the size that you're going to do and you get, the, you get the punches. And also what you can put in, you can keep everything that you need for bread fishing in this box you see. Uh, like my needle, everything it goes in there. It's pretty straightforward, but it's handy because when I'm bread fishing, all I do is pick that up and I know everything that I need for fishing bread is going to be in there. So I've got that to start with. Now then, there you go, go on, get them. So that's, then, then what I do, I've got my tank. Well, I use my tank a lot at home for testing colours, ground baits, flavourings and things like that. It's a great tool because you can understand what's happening to a bait, to a hook or anything like that, we're getting one of these tanks at home. It's really important that I understand, so I know what the baits are, are actually doing. Uh, so get a tank, put it in water and you can understand actually what's happening. So then the next thing you want is bread. And I get me, you've heard me talk about my Goro bread. I always get a fresh loaf every morning. I go, I like it nice and fresh. And I also like it because it's got the crust as well. And I want, sometimes I use the crust uh, and not just the plain white uh, bread in the middle and I'll explain that in a second but they, but they uh, so I get a fresh loaf every morning because I want it nice and fresh so how do I do it? well all I do first of all I get a quick stop you saw the Alan Taylor nut I started using that uh, you saw it in a previous video of mine so I've got all that ready you can see that there I've got it with, on a long hair uh, because bread swells up that much, you can get away with with a long hair, maybe inch and a half, uh, may, maybe four centimetres, something like that. But I've still got the little tag there if I want to shorten it, but you don't need to with bread. You'll find out that it swells up to the length that you're going to do. Now then, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to get my punch. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my punch. I'm going to use 8 mil. I use 8 mil if I'm at Lindo because I'm mountain fishing for F1s as well. If I go to places like Allcroft where it's all carp fishing, what I tend to do is use the 10. I make sure that it's free and I get the punch and I press it straight to the base. I don't press me, me bread before. Some people do, I don't. And the reason for that is I can have it as spongy as I want. So all I'm doing, I'm pressing it to the bottom. And if I do it 
three times like that, sometimes it's four, you pull it out and you can see all the breads in there. Then what I do, I put my finger over that end, my thumb over there and I press it like that, just to compress it best I can, as hard as I want. You'd be surprised that no matter how hard you press that, it will soon swell up when it's in the water. So I've got that on. I've then got my, my quick stop in my loop, as you can see. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to get my needle then, that's in my tray. I'm going to put the point in the needle, like that. I'm going to put it along. So I put it along, so I grip it like that, so it's going along the, the needle. And then I put it in the, the base like that. And I push it till it hits the solid bait at the end. Then I press the presser, it comes out, pushes it out. I put that down and then what I do, I pull that on, turn it round. And you can see now that it's gone onto the quick stop like that and I've got my bread. Now you can, your things are a bit of a gap to that. You can shorten it by pulling that little lever if you want. or But you won't have to because you'll see how it swells up. And that's all, that's all that I do. I just do that. Sometimes it's three pushes, sometimes it's four. And then all I do, I put it in the water and that'll sink to the bottom. You might think, oh, it sank to the bottom that. Eventually what happens is it will swell up and it'll start floating up and start coming up. Um, and, and that's all that I do basically. And what I usually start off with is a 30 centimetre up length or a foot. And if I think the fish are off the bottom, I'll extend it to a bit longer than that. Some people just have a two or a three foot one, but I always start on a 30 centimetres and, and work it out that way. Now then. That is um, is all I do, simple as that. But if I want something to float quicker, if I want it to come off the bottom quicker, or sometimes if you do it right, you can make it float straight away, I use the crust. Never throw the crust away, right? They're a great, a great piece. And the reason for that is this. If I get the crust and I put it in my thing and I press, the first one is always um, sorry, that way, it's always the crust up like that, so it's actually the first one. And if, if I do that a couple of times, three times, and then turn it over a couple of times like that, and press it, I've actually got the crust part of the actual bait. Press it to compress it like that. Then I get a, a, another needle. Like that. And I put the uh, sorry, the quick stop, I get the quick stop and I put in the needle, like that. There you go, we're struggling here. There you, go. there you go. Put the line along, so you tighten the line. And then, what you do, you put, you, just take your time because the crust obviously is a bit harder, like that. Press it in gently, pull it out. And now, they're all crusts. Now, we might get lucky here. There you go, they're floating. So, the floating, now they might sink when, when they get full of water, eventually like that, they've just sank now like, but that'll pop up even quicker, right? What'll happen is the water will get that and they'll pop up even quicker. But sometimes they just sit there and float and it makes it more lighter, it makes it even better. But sometimes by using the crust, because it's lighter, it'll swell up quicker and it'll, come, it'll actually come off the bottom. See that one now, the first one I put in, you can see that it's really light and not quite floating yet, but they will float them eventually. They'll, they'll pop up off the bottom and you'll see them float. I thought that crust one might come up a little bit quicker, but it had. let's have a look. There you go. But you can see that it's falling. But the, the most important thing about that is look how quick the, the bread has swollen up. It's unbelievable how quick it swells up and they the fill up towards the hook. They've only been in there a couple of minutes and they're actually swollen up already. But what you've got to do is believe, believe that it's on the hook and that's the biggest problem and that's what Neil told me. Most people think it's come off the hook and it ain't, it's still there. It'll be there for ages until the fish comes along and they just, you can imagine there's nothing in, in, in that bread. You can, there's no tin it, it's just nearly all full of water but they can't resist it. So the only thing if you want something that's going to float 100% and you, and you definitely know it's going to happen is get these floating neons. Okay, so if you get, if you want it bread, you can pick a white one up and I've got a quick stop here and all I'm going to do now some places I go to I, I will start with a, with a floating neon before bread for example if I went to Allcroft I'd, I'd cast the floating neon before the bread because I know it's going to float and the fish want to be off the bottom 
If I went to Lindholm, I wouldn't. I'd start on bread. So everywhere, everywhere is different. But the one thing about the floating neons is this. This is, a, this is the beauty of them. The floating. It's floating on the top. So I know when I cast that out, that's going to be sat off the bottom. Now, if I use a 14 up, an 018 line, which is heavy line, I'd test it before by having a little uh, tub of water inside of me, and I might put two on to make sure that it's going to sit up. So if you want a bait that's going to be definitely sat in the middle of the shoal, off the bottom, then put a floating knee on. Otherwise, you want bread. I mean, you can see that crust now. In a few minutes, it's starting to come off the bottom, whereas the normal bread isn't. Get yourself one of these and you can test everything yourself and you can play with things at home. How many pieces of bread do I put on? You know, how long's my hair going to be? That's not really important when you're fishing bread because it swells up to the hook. So you don't, it's not that important. But if you want something that floats, get yourself some floating neons. You get white ones, yellow ones, pink ones, red ones. But if you want them to float, that they're guaranteed. Bread is not always guaranteed. But that's how I put them on. That's how I fish them and that's how I put them on the hook. So just to recap, get yourself a tank so you can play about with it at home. Get one of these bread trays. There's a few companies do them. And make sure that when you go, you always get a fresh bag of bread. And make sure you get the crusts in as well. Because that way they become important if you want the bait to float quicker than the normal bread. And that's how I hook my bread. It's straightforward. But Neil McKinnon told me years ago, believe that it's on the hook. Believe it's on the hook. Because it usually is.